Welcome to this presentation on your medical astrology chart in plain English. Understand your health with the stars at the moment of birth by yours truly. If you're here, it's because you're either very curious to what I'm about to say or you're interested on in how far I can take this type of nonsense. Either way, I thank you for being here. In this short presentation, I expect that you learn about the history of astrology and it was how it was used in the study of medicine, the modern usage of the signs, the zodiac signs and the human body, and a sample chart that I made using my own chart. Obviously, for confidential purposes, I cannot show any of my clients' charts, and that's how I plan to keep it. Therefore, you decide to work together on this, I will also keep your chart confidential. So I'm going to show you how I use medical astrology to find relationships among the body's functions according to the stars at the moment of birth. In this chart, I want you to follow the cursor to show you what you're seeing. First, right here, we start with the 12 zodiac signs. The very first sign is Aries, or you can see here the ram. And in the medical astrology, Aries is related to the head in the human body. Hence, those who are born in the month of Aries which is March 21st to April 19th, are likely to develop some symptoms in the head region. Depending on whether you're a male or a female, the head issues can be acute or chronic. And if you keep following this type of clock on the next sign going counterclockwise, you'll see torus, which is the area of the neck or the cervical region. And then with Gemini, you will see it with the lungs and the arms and cancer and so on and so forth that all the way until Pisces however this does not mean that the month you're born you will suffer problems in that area specifically I wish it was that simple though but as you can see with this information plus the planets obviously that are not shown here I receive a basic yet holistic picture that helps me better assess health problems in clients I have recently learned that astrology was just as important to learn as any science back in the times of the ancient Greeks. Even in the Middle Ages, astro astrology was very much used for the study of medicine. Next, I want to mention the history of astrology and how it evolved in the Western world. As we go through this, keep in mind that the yellow arrows show a period of acceptance and the red arrows show a peri period of rejection. So first off, astrology was be believed to become a science during the time of the Babylonians back in 2000 BC. In this civilization, we had the cuneiform writing system that helped save records and teachings of astrology to students of many professions. In addition, the pyramids built there helped study the stars more in depth. Later, in around 200 BC, astrology was introduced to the Greeks, even before that, I think, who used it extensively in every profession, especially medicine at the time of Hippocrates, who is known today as the father of Western medicine. Today, we consider Hippocrates to be the father um, of medicine and also the we use the Hippocratic Oath, which is what every healthcare professional professional devotes him or herself to the service of humanity. As a physician himself, Hippocrates utilized astrology extensively to properly treat the sick. He even said once, a physician without a knowledge of astrology has no right to call himself a physician. From that I can say that education in that topic was very much stress. Um, then astrology was transformed into the Roman culture when the Roman Empire took over them and it was very well assimilated because a lot of the gods were just changed into names so from Greek gods they became Roman gods but then in the Roman Empire when they adapted Christianity and it became the official religion astrology went underground because of its contradictions to the Bible and this was around 400 AD Though astrology today was very much mentioned in the Bible, and we can see that in many ways, that what's, but that's obviously, obviously a topic that I have to mention at another time. Anyone who dared to speak against the Bible at that time would be persecuted and even killed. But later, 
sometime in 600 AD, after Muhammad founded Islam, many of the Arabs began the conquest in the Middle East from Saudi Arabia into India, going into East and then Spain, all the way up to um, some sort of the regions of Spain, known as El Andalus, going into the West. But by this time, the Arabs began to build and expand the empire until the time of the Crusades in the 12th in the 1200s. Astrology began to resurface again because the Arabs became scholars in the topic of medicine, using new methods of astrology. Hunani medicine and even Sina created the most prestigious medical universities at that time. This is where the Arabs and the Europeans exchanged information and astrology and became popular once again in the West, all from the Middle Ages to the Renaissance, all the way until the, 19, the 1700s. But once again, in Europe, in the 1700s of Europe, astrology went under a time of rejection when empirical evidence became the norm and the status quo of education in the West. So one thing to keep in mind though is that many physicians still believe that the stars influence our bodies at the time of birth. Though astrology was not the status quo, a lot of people still study that. But again, it made a comeback once again, thanks to India and the East. The problem with empirical West, Western Europe was that it took away the soul and essence of things that were studied about life. Everything became material and, div and divisive. If, it's something if it was something that you couldn't measure, it wasn't real. So many Westerners were starved in, spirit in spirituality. This is why India and the rest of the East, like Zen and Japan, and Buddhist practices in Southeast Asia attracted so many people. In addition, India also used astrology extensively, which inspired many physicians to explore more of this lost art. Then, astrology also became part of the movement during the rise of psychology in the 19th and 20th century with Jung and Freud. This was the time when personalities and human behavior were studied extensively. Let me put that there. Yep. The fact that astrology could also bring its own personality theories based on the 12 zodiac signs, it also received greater acceptance. And this is where we stand today. The st statistics show that 30% of Americans read their horoscope every day. Though that may not be much in percentage, that's about 97.5 million people. Something in astrology creates curiosity whether you're a skeptic or a believer. My job is to help you understand how astrology is only a, a tool that we can benefit from. So as you can see here in the Greek world, world astrology we know today was follow the hermetic philosophy, which said, as above, so below, as within, so without. Though short in words, that quote says more than 10, a thousand pictures. In other words, the microcosm and the macrocosm mirror each other. We can see this in medicine today also. For example, see this individual's picture here. This is obviously a human being. Whether male or female, it doesn't matter. What matters is that this individual is very complex inside. You have bones, muscles, organs, joints, and many other things, and they all somehow work together. It may seem simple, but at this exact moment, the human body is performing every function to keep us alive. Think of this as you. You are in this moment, and aware of the hundreds of chemical and physiological processes going on inside of your body. Now the picture, picture the stars doing this exact same process. The ancients were only aware of our solar system and how these planets and stars influence us from above. This is the micro macrocosm. Thanks to modern astronomy, we can appreciate more stars and galaxies out there. Whatever event is going on out there, don't you think it's affecting us in some way? We know that the moon affects our sleep cycle, and depending on the month you are born, you are prone to specific ailments compared to other people. This is not hocus pocus anymore. It's actual real science and observations. But ask me later if you want to know more about sources where I can guide you for that. In addition, we've also worked in what we call the microscopic world. The bacteria, the cell, 
the atoms, the molecules, quartz, DNA, etc. Anything that requires a microscope or even more specialized instruments, we are researching at this moment. The biggest discovery that modern medicine has connected humans into the microscopic world is DNA. This is the microcosm. We know very much that DNA influences how we look and even behave with others. DNA is the blueprint of the physical manifestation of your current anatomy and physiology. To many today, DNA is actually what you're destined to be, or at least to look like. However, this is actually a busted myth. myth. Today, we have discovered that genes can change according to our behavior, lifestyle changes, and even our diet. This is, what stud this is what is studied in epigenetics, then another discipline of genetic or a subdiscipline of genetics. Like DNA, the stars become your personal information on the events that you're prone to experience. As above, so below, as within, so without. From DNA to anatomy and physiology, from the macrocosm to the microcosm. Where does this leave, leave us, though, as humans here in this physical realm? Well, I think it leaves us as the mirror between the microcosm and the macrocosm. As a mirror, we reflect what happens within and above. So anytime the mirror of our bodies start having some cloudiness, such as a symptom of any kind of illness, we can take charge to clean ourselves from that cloudiness and take the correct action. Keep in mind that we are always in charge of our health. Never forget that. Now that I've briefly spoken on the hermetic philosophy and understood, and you understand some of my stance on the microcosm versus microcosm dilemma, I want to show you my astrological chart. So let's leave the theoretical behind and get, get more practical here. So here there is a website called astrotheme.com. And you can find the site yourself and enter your information. And first it will confirm what you have. And you must know your date of birth as close to the minute as possible. If you don't remember, that's okay. Just try your approximate best. As you can see here, this is my approximate time. For even my mom does not exactly remember when I was born to the minute. But it's close enough and it will do. And also, the one thing you have to remember is also the city that you were born. So this is what you will get when you enter information. So this is my natal chart, showing how the stars were aligned the moment I was born. Now you may ask, what the heck is all of this? Well, if you can remember from the previous page about the human body and the astrological sign, this is what part of it is. The signs are present from Aries, which is right here all the way and going counterclockwise to Pisces. And the stars are the relationships among those signs. And the stars are anything that are outside. I want you to just ignore the gray stars at this moment and just focus on the color ones. Oops, let me go back there. In other words, think of the stars as the physiology and the relationship of the body between the chemical processes and the zodiac signs as the actual anatomy and part of the body. I will just show you here about the sun and the moon because those are the easiest symbols to follow. As you can see, the sun is under this sign, which is Scorpio, right here. Scorpio shows the anatomy of the genital area, the prostate, the penis, the testicles, and even some of the rectum and in females will be the uterus, and to some it might be the ovaries too. In this case, the sun sign, because I am a male, shows my acute problems that my body can succumb when there is illness. But as for the moon sign, you can see right here, it's in the next zodiac, which is Sagittarius. Sagittarius as you can see, it's next to, next to Scorpio, and anatomically, it represents the hips, the thighs, and everything inside. So the gluteus, the glutes, the hamstrings, and the sciatic nerve. 
the moon sign shows where chronic problems develop the moment that I succumb to illness too. So we have acute and chronic, but that's all I'm going to show you for now. Because I just want to show you the actual findings that when I did my own chart. So first thing, acute problems most likely to occur at the genitals, most likely to be from inflammation of some sort. So we can even tell you whether it's going to be some sort of inflammatory process or a form of fluid blocks, which is kind of cool. Chronic problems most likely to occur at the thighs. So specifically, leading to, there's a connection with that with, in the stomach, which leads to digestive problems and causing roughness in the skin in the thighs. Also mentions the thighs are the first place where illness goes when my body is weak and likely could have developed in joint problems at the thighs and hip if I don't take precautions, meaning if I don't exercise and if I do not take care of myself, that's where the symptoms are most likely going to start first. Signs of serious problems are prone to begin at the head, including excessive brain activity. And that is true. I am very, very prone to excessive thinking. I'm even burning out my hair, my hair when I was in school because it was just so much mental activity that I could not stop it. So the next findings, if I perform activities that do not involve much movement, fluid can easily accumulate in my knees before anywhere else. So again, exercise is important in my lifestyle. And again, the kidneys and adrenals become weak if I don't do this. Mentally, I tend to be sarcastic, bold, and stubborn. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Lifestyle modifications. Advice, it's not spending so much time in the sun and more time on earthing. So it probably is because I am more of white skin than other people, especially where I was born. So yeah, I had to be careful where I go in the sun. But at least I can spend more time earthing, which means grounding, which is a practice that you can just do anywhere, anytime outside. So to summarize, I'd like you to see how much medical astrology can be useful as an extra tool to understand your own self and health challenges. As you may remember, what the stars show the moment you were born influences your mind and body, just like your DNA. But always keep in mind that because you're prone to some illness, it does not have to be this way. Destiny relies in our choices, not in chance. So next, find out about you. This is what I will show you in order if you decide to work together. Type of patient that you may be, type of personality, I'm sorry, um, acute symptoms location, chronic problems, devitalizing, devitalizing part of the body, lifestyle recommendations to avoid or embrace, positive and negative re relations that will either protect or harm the specific areas in the body, and what in astrology they call houses that show which part of the body is at risk of harm or even vitality. So which part of the body could be a strength also. Here you are. My Instagram. And my email. Right here written. I do want to thank for attending this presentation. And if you have further questions, feel free to reach me at any time. I can guarantee you that if we work together, you will learn something new about yourself. Allow the stars to show you the way. Thank you again and have a good one.